Yo, what's good guys? We are back at it again with another MLB The Show video for you guys. And today I'm going to be going over all of, in my opinion, the best outfielders you guys can be using in the game right now. Uh, cards that will help you win more games. Um, one thing worth mentioning is kind of how this is catered. There seems to be conf some confusion among some people uh, that this is catered to legend. Catered to like the difficulty that I play the most. Um, which honestly I play more Hall of Fame than anything nowadays. So. Uh, it's not catered for legend. It's catered to some Hall of Fame, some All Star. Um, really, any card that's good on Hall of Fame will be great on All Star. Uh, not every card that's great on All Star will be on Hall of Fame. Usually, I mention if a card's like an All Star Demon card, um, or if like a card that you should be considering a Hall of Fame. So, wanted to clear that up uh, real quick right before we get into it. Uh, if this does kind of help curate your lineup, help you pick out some cards you want to use for your team, a like, a subscription would be greatly appreciated. We're doing it all year, uh, and we recently hit 5,400 subs, I believe, which is crazy because we just hit 5,000 not very long ago. Uh, so I do want to thank all you guys for the support. Yeah, 5446 as of recording this, so absolutely crazy. I want to thank you guys so much. So uh, let's hop into it. Aaron Hicks here. A great, in theory, budget card. Uh, basically, the way to think about this, D is going to be our DH tier. Um, so, the way to think of this is like B is like viable cards, right? Where uh, if you want to make these cards work, you can make them work. They're decent cards. Uh, they're nothing to laugh at. C is kind of laughable. I don't know if any cards on here will be C because I mainly kind of cherry pick the cards that I can see people using. Um, A is like pretty viable cards like you load into a rank game you see some of these cards you're not too surprised uh there's a reason to use them whether it be you like the swing or they have great stats uh and then s tier is like super meta cards cards that uh everybody should be using everybody should be trying to use if they want to win more games uh so you kind of get the uh the gist of it judge i think is a tier uh, some people struggle with the really big strike zones a lot. Uh, for me personally, it's not a big deal. I really enjoy Judge. He is one of those cards this year where everything he touches leaves the yard. Uh, a lot of that has to do with his hitting quirks and the fact that he pretty much always has maxed out power. He's got good contact. He's got good clutch. There's a lot to like about Aaron Judge this year other than his defense. His defense is brutal. It's just good enough, I think, to keep him out of the pure DH tier. Uh, but you could definitely make the argument that he's better as a DH. But uh, definitely a viable card, super usable. I used him on my team up until very late Hall of Fame when I was pushing for World Series. Definitely a viable card, um, but he's not going to be a gold glover wherever you put him. Uh, obviously, he's best in the corner outfield spot. Done. Strict DH, but a very good one. Uh, a lot of top end players really enjoy this card. He makes both the Buxton and the Arenado team, so he's very viable on both All-Star and Hall of Fame in that regard, uh, and even Legend, right? So, not a bad card. Not necessarily the best DH in the game, in my opinion. The best DHs probably will actually get placed in tiers, uh, but he is very good, and he's like a baby Jordan, kind of. Alex Gordon, going with Hicks. Uh, if you're using him, it's because you're a Royals fan or you really like his swing. He always has a pretty good swing, um, but really his stats are super mediocre. On paper, he's a great defender, but he's slow, so that limits his range a lot. Um, on paper, he's an okay hitter. I think he has about 80s in most hitting stats, uh, but the clutch is good. So uh, there's some, some reasons to use him. I would probably steer clear of him personally, but if you want to use him, uh, I think there are arguments to be made. McCutcheon, definitely A tier. The speed is nice. The general defense and reaction is not the greatest, unfortunately, but, you know, the speed kind of helps to make up for that. Um, has, I believe, some hitting quirks, I want to say. I'd be shocked if he has none. So he's got unfazed and fighter. Not really things that you're looking for, uh, necessarily. Mainly, you, you want, like, breaking ball or dead red for the most part. Um, but not a bad card and super viable in the meta, right? There's a bunch of really good lefty starting pitchers right now. Um, so he kind of counteracts a lot of those. Not bad in center field, not bad in a corner outfield spot. He's definitely viable uh, and he's super cheap, right? So if you're somebody that struggles a lot against John, a lot against Randy, uh, we're going to start seeing some lighter, some Noah Schultz. 
this card can help you out a whole lot. Uh, we got Ruth. Ruth is obviously S tier. The defense is nothing to write home about. It's actually not very bad either. Uh, he's not incredibly slow. He doesn't have the worst reaction in the world. Uh, he's basically not a net positive or a net negative in the field. Uh, but the bat is crazy, right? On paper, he's the best hitter in the game. In practicum, he's one of the better hitters in the game. Uh, but I wouldn't say he's the best, in my personal opinion. Bernie, uh, a good card in center field. He's probably C tier. In a corner outfield spot, he's probably B. Really, you're using him for the okay contact and the switch hitting ability. If you are somebody that crutches switch hitters, if you need switch hitters, uh, these two can be great outfielders for you. Uh, he's not a bad card. I believe he has some good quirks. You can see breaking ball and dead red. So uh, truly his power is going to be you know, more in like the 90s range is what it's going to feel like because dead red and breaking ball, no matter what pitch is thrown, he's going to hit it harder than if he didn't have those quirks. Um, so not a bad card by any means. Definitely usable. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and recommend them, especially recommend locking in Judge and Garrett Cole to get him. Um, but overall, not a bad card. Billy Williams, this card's a DH. He is shockingly bad in the field. I had him in a couple BR runs. Um, and he can't touch lefties, so he's not even really a DH. As far as DHs are concerned, uh, definitely towards the back end. We will fill this category up. He will be towards the back end. Having a platoon DH is not the most ideal thing in the world. In general, you kind of want your DH to work through the whole game. Um, but obviously, you can always do a platoon. Uh, so this Harper card, not very good, especially for a 2015 Harper card. He went crazy in 2015. Uh, the swing is still good. He just cannot touch lefties. And there's another very similar card on this list that a lot of people are going to like. Uh, obviously, a very, very good swing. Nobody's debating that Griffey doesn't have a good swing. Just can't touch lefties. I think super fractured. He gets like 80 power against lefties. It's usable. Um, but if you use this card on like Hall of Fame, you're just going to get spammed with away sliders, away cutters, um, and spammed with fast inside sinkers. Uh, he's going to get lit up on Hall of Fame. If you're on All-Star and you want to use him, he's definitely viable. I don't think he's the best option. Um, same for Harper. Harper's thing is he does make the Buxton team, which does make him a lot better in the field, uh, and it does help out the power a little bit. Still kind of more of an All-Star card, uh, but not a terrible card. Obviously, this isn't accounting for team boost. So, um, Buxton, I'm assuming if you're using Buxton, you're using them for the boost for the most part, um, but not a bad card at all on All-Star. If you get the Hall of Fame, you know, you're going to start creeping down. Um, but on All-Star, which is kind of his preferred difficulty, very good card. Uh, that card hit ridiculously well for me. Cedric, you can still make this card work. He's more of a corner outfielder. He's not a center fielder. He's a little slow to have in center field. Uh, but the swing's very good, and the stats are decent enough. Um, I'd rather have him than these two, but that's not saying a whole lot. He could easily slip to C tier, uh, you know, if enough cards kind of fit those other tiers. Charlie Blackman, a lot to like about this card. Very good against righties. Very good clutch. I believe his clutch is maxed. Yeah, so really the issue with him is the power against lefties. He does have breaking ball hitter. It's going to help him out a little bit. The power against lefties is questionable. Um, obviously not a great fielder either. Really, if you're using Chuck Nasty, it's because you love his swing. Um, but his stats aren't too bad either. Chili Dog, this is a DH. Um, he would have been viable in the field, in my opinion, if they made him a corner outfielder, but they made him a center fielder, which means he's going to lose five reaction if you move him around. So I think that lands him as a DH. Uh, and honestly, it lands him as a platoon DH, which sucks. Um, so, you know, if you want to platoon him and Billy Williams, I think the problem is they both hit righties. Yeah, so you can see they both hit lefty, or they both hit righties. They both can't touch lefties. Uh, so that's not even necessarily a great platoon. You would have to platoon him with somebody that can really uh, scorch lefties. Yelich. Ooh, I'm questionable on this one. He could sneak into S here. He does have very good clutch. I think he has like 104 clutch, if I'm remembering right. 106 so it's even better than i remembered you can see the contacts are good 
Uh, the power is a little underwhelming, but he does have dead red, so that's going to help him out a little bit. Yeah, I think top of A tier, I think he's a very viable option. If you really, really like his swing, then he's a great option for you. Uh, nothing special on defense, but also not terrible. Not a super fast card, but also not terrible. Drew Jones, this is a all-star demon card. He is going to struggle mightily on Hall of Fame. Uh, but his kind of, you know, saving grace is that he's the best defensive center fielder in the game. You put him on the Bucs and team, he doesn't even really need the Bucs and team. Uh, but you put him on the Bucs and team, it's going to help his offense a lot. Not really going to do a lot for his defense. He's already completely insane on defense. He gets to everything. Uh, his range is crazy. If you are a more defensive-oriented player, if you don't hit very well, uh, and you're in a lot of tight pitching games where bloopers getting down up the middle, uh, can you know make or break a game for you? Drew Jones should probably be your center fielder. DC uh, was S tier when the game came out. Obviously, not anymore. Uh, the swing is very nice. A lot of people like it. I don't love it, but it does play for me. Like when I'm online, I do not struggle with the swing at all. It's just not really my personal preference. Um, but he's crazy. He plays better than his stats. Uh, if you put him on the Bucks and team, he has kind of an argument for one of the better defensive center fielders in the game right now. Uh, he gets a lot faster. So on the Bucks and team, you can definitely make an S tier argument, especially on All Star. Uh, but this is assuming no team boost. So I think he's very good, not like top, top, top tier. This card on the Bucks and boost on All Star, S tier. He has a very Jordan S swing. They are very similar. He has a little bit earlier of, earlier of a leg kick than Jordan. Doesn't have a lot of the quirks that Jordan has, but by far one of my favorite lefty swings I've used all year. That being said, without the bucks and boosts, he is way down here. Uh, he's more of a corner guy without the boost. With the boost, you can definitely put him in center field. I think he has 81 or 82 speed by default. Um, so he kind of needs the bucks and boost to get that full range to be a better defensive player. Uh, and obviously he's going to get power with the boost too. So uh, with the boost, arguably S tier, especially on all-star. Um, but obviously not everybody can run that boost. Uh, similar boat for Stanton. Uh, actually not going in the DH tier, which is crazy for a Stanton card. This card's not bad. He has okay reaction. If you put some parallels on him, he gets up to diamond defense on the bucks and team. Not a bad card. He's a little bit dated at this point, in my opinion, uh, but still very usable. If you really, really enjoy his swing, you can definitely still use this card uh, and win some online games with him. King Vaughn over here. Um, absolutely crazy card on the Buxton team. He kind of tiptoes on that DH border, though. I'm going to have to really like deep dive. So assuming no Buxton team, like I said, uh, I think he's more of that DH category. He's not terrible in the field he's not like a Jordan or uh adam dunn or billy williams in the field uh but he's not very good either uh does not need the bucks and team to be great you saw kind of his contact numbers here a little bit low against lefties right about where you want to be against righties great power uh not terrible vision you can see they put him directly on the bucks and team uh and pretty good clutch with a good swing you, he has dead red he has some other decent quirks um, not a bad card by any means at DH. If you put him on the Buxton team, you could definitely put him in a corner outfield spot, um, and he would be better there. But assuming no team boost, more of a DH. Hap, top of A tier. Uh, really, this card could be S tier. He's just, he's a little bit slow. If I'm not mistaken, his speed's in the 60s, uh, and he doesn't have great reaction. So 76 and 61 speed. I don't think that's bad enough to where you have to DH him. Obviously, Judge is a lot more poor than that. Um, so you can definitely get away without DHing Hap. If you need a switch hitter, he's kind of the upgrade, the direct upgrade from like Bernie or Aaron Hicks. Uh, does struggle a little bit against lefties. The power is not really there. The contact's not really there. Absolutely murders the ball against righties. Has a hitting quirk. I believe he has breaking ball. Yeah, so he has breaking ball. Um, so he's going to hit the ball well. Not a bad card. Potentially S tier. It just kind of depends on how much you like his swing and how much you value switch hitting. This card, not really good anymore. Not really a card you want to be using. Um, you know, obviously on the Bucks and team, you can argue up to maybe A tier. 
on all-star difficulty but you know this is assuming no boost we're just taking the card at their base level um and he's all right jaron duran really enjoy this card really like his swing he has a great swing uh the main issue with this card is the power against lefties so 78 is not terrible you're still going to be able to hit home runs with that amount of power uh but it's not ideal so you can see 98 97 against righties pretty good pretty good clutch the fielding might turn you off a little bit at first but then you see the 87 reaction and the 91 speed there is not a better defensive left fielder in the game so you leave him in left where he gets that 87 reaction absolutely nasty card if you like those speedy left fielders uh corner outfielders he's your guy has a great swing also jason bay i kind of oof. when this card came out i don't think he had to be a dh at this point i think he has to be uh he is just abysmal in the field i don't hate his swing i think his swing is playable uh and the hitting stats for him are pretty good and obviously he's very cheap um, so if you're balling on a budget, not a bad option here. Let's kind of organize these DHs a little bit more. I think that's kind of what I want. Uh, the Martian on the Buxton team, easily S tier, right? If you are an all-star player and you run the Buxton team, this is an S tier guy. Maybe not a center fielder because he's not the fastest, doesn't have the best reaction. But it's hard to find a switch hitter in this game, much less a switch hitting center fielder with amazing power and a great swing. Um, so I really do enjoy him. I think on all-star at his base, he's a tier um, just because he's serviceable on defense and he's going to rake. He's crazy. JD as an outfielder, I'm going to need a refresher on his uh, reaction because he is actually a primary left fielder, believe it or not. Um, so he doesn't lose any reaction. 63, 38 speed. He's a DH. Realistically, he's a DH. Uh, if you want to run the full Nolan team, you're probably going to have to run him in the field. But as a DH, I think he ranks like here on the Nolan team as a DH. I think he's probably the best in this category. Um, so not a bad card by any means. Another pure DH here in JD. Uh, not as bad in the field as a lot of these other guys, but also not the best card in the world. Really, if you're using him, you're using him for the bat. Juan, I got to check. He's kind of on that border. You can see uh, the fielding, not really worried about. It's more so about the reaction and the speed. Uh, I think he kind of fits in that judge category where, like, if you really want to use him in the field, he's not going to be the worst player in the world in the field, but he's also not going to be a positive. Really, you're using him for the bat and the swing. A lot of people really enjoy his swing. He always destroys baseballs in the game. You see dead red and breaking ball so everything he touches is going to be a laser beam uh he's an absolute dog i really enjoy him and as far as a you know a is that card a left fielder or a right fielder yeah so in right not that bad if you move him around i'd probably keep him in right or dh i probably wouldn't move him around too much uh j rod i think even on the bucks and team is probably c tier um I take it back. Without the Bucks and team, probably C tier. With it, probably B tier. Uh, it really depends on how much you like his swing. I believe his speed's pretty good, but his reaction isn't, so that's gonna hurt him. So 75 reaction, but he will have 99 speed on the Bucks and team. It's doable. Um, I don't personally love the card on the team. He's probably B or A. Without it, I'd probably steer clear. Kyle Lewis, a very similar card in that regard. Um, you can see. Bad contact, uh, great power, a good swing. I haven't used this card in the past. He had a great swing. I don't know what they're doing to him now. Uh, you can see not terrible reaction, but he is going to lose five because uh, I am personally going to recommend that you probably play this card in a corner outfield spot. Um, so without the boost, I think he's decent. I think he's probably B tier. Uh, with the boost, he's probably A tier, S tier. Uh, just kind of depends on what his swing's looking like. Lourdes Goriel. Um, not a bad card has inverse splits hits for contact better against lefties uh, I believe and then hits for power better against righties um, So you always have something working for you with him. I don't personally love his swing. He gets jammed a lot for me uh, But I believe he does have some pretty good quirks Just breaking ball. Never mind. I lied. 
Um, so he has Breaking Ball, which helps a little bit. Um, not really a card at the top of my list, but not terrible. I believe he's not awful in the field. You can see he is a gold defender. The reaction's really bad, uh, and the speed's not great. So basically, you're getting judge defense, judge levels of defense, without that Aaron Judge level bat. So I think that really hurts him. Uh, Conforto, this card's a DH. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nothing more to it. Uh, as far as lefty DHs go, he's similar to Adam Dunn. The stats are a little worse. It's kind of who swing do you like more? Uh, Dunn, I'd say he's usable on higher difficulties. Uh, Mickey, up there with Hap, right? If you want a switch hitting outfielder, Mickey kind of gives you not the peaks of like Ian Hap's hitting, um, but you know, he's a capable defender. You can make the argument if you'd want to have him in center field or not, but you can see this card came out a while ago, so I'm sure there's a bunch of people that have him super factored. 98, 88, um, 80, 93. Uh, pretty good vision if you care about that. Pretty good fielding, not bad speed. So you put some parallels on this card. He has the two most important active quirks. Absolute dog. He tattoos the ball. You don't really notice the power with him. A lot of people really always enjoy his swing. I'm a big fan of this Mickey card. For relatively cheap, I don't think you're getting a better outfielder in the game. Mike Cameron, obviously S tier. Uh, who knows if this card will still be S tier like two weeks from now when ranked gets updated and most people can get him. Um, but in theory, a very good card. Haven't personally used him yet. Doesn't really matter what his swing is like because he has breaking ball. He has very good contact numbers. He has good, pretty much very good power numbers also. Um, the vision isn't bad, but look at the defense. 91 speed. Uh, you know, let's just do a little thought experiment here. Well, let's say parallel three. Parallel three is very realistic for a lot of people here. 94 speed. 93 steel, uh, 95 fielding, 96 reaction. So this is basically Drew Jones, but he can actually hit. Um, so his outfield defense is going to be invaluable. Um, you know, he's probably the most God squad good defender. Uh, obviously, you could run Drew Jones, but you're running, you're losing some offense there. Uh, a card like Willie Mays isn't out yet, you know, stuff like that. So uh, as far as a defensive center fielder, he's pretty much the best option in the game right now. Trout, obviously S tier. Uh, the stats aren't too crazy, but he's always playing up on the inside edge. He's having a crazy year in real life right now, so he might get upgraded. Um, just a great card. The problem with him is the reaction. He does struggle a lot in center field. I've got mine super fractured. You can see... Uh, hitting wise great contact left good contact right usually he's playing up against righties uh, good power left great power right really what sucks with him is no active quirks for uh, balls right he doesn't have dead red he doesn't have breaking ball and you do notice that I'll be honest you do notice that he's not quite the trout that we've had in the past 73 reaction you notice that um, has gold defense. If you put him on the Bucks and team, he does get diamond. Uh, and then he is fairly fast. He's not super fast. So uh, he's decent. Is he worth 180K, which is what he's going for at the time of this video? Probably not. Um, but he is still a very good option. Mookie S tier, uh, really just because of the bat. He is incredibly slow. He doesn't have great reactions. He's going to be losing five reaction. Um, just because you're going to be putting him in a secondary. So he tiptoes on like that Aaron Judge level of like, maybe you would rather DH him. In general, for me, he plays shortstop. So that's kind of where he'll be on the infield tier list. Um, but the bat is crazy. The bat is crazy. If you can catch him on a day where he is playing up against righties, he's a monster. Uh, you kind of need him to be playing up against righties. So that does kind of hurt him. Um, but this card's crazy. You see Dead Red, Breaking Ball, Unfazed, uh, has Night Player. He just launches the ball. He is crazy. His swing is unreal. Um, he is a top, top, top tier card. I think when he's playing up with Inside Edge, easily S tier. Maybe you can make the argument in his current state if he's playing, uh, you know, how his attributes are and not with Inside Edge. Uh, then maybe he is A tier, especially in the outfield. But at second base, at shortstop, easy S tier. Um, and I think he's probably S tier for me. 
Cassianos S tier in the current meta of the game. There are so many strong lefty starting pitchers. Uh, Cassianos' bat is invaluable. He is basically Babe Ruth, except against lefties instead of against righties. Um, and honestly, the defense isn't terrible. It's not great. It's not ideal. It's not exactly what you want out there. We'll look at him at like P3 because I think that's, you know, realistic. Uh, so max contact, good contact against righties, awesome power against lefties, really awesome power against righties also. Uh, you can see dead red and breaking ball. He's going to tattoo the ball every time he touches it. Good vision. The clutch is a little lackluster, to be honest. You would like to see some better clutch uh for you know the other contact numbers this card has but is what it is 77 fielding so he is a silver fielder if you you know put in the work to super factor him then you are still looking at a silver fielder i lied um good enough arm strength great reaction great reaction and really not the worst speed in the world so uh if you leave him in right field he's going to have 80 reaction with close to 70 speed that's good range. It's not great range, but his bat's going to make up for anything he can't get to. Uh, that card's crazy. Oswaldo Cabrera. This card's close. I don't know if he's exactly S tier. I'm not going to put any parallels on him. So 90 contact, that's about, you know, the minimum of what you want to play on like Hall of Fame, to play on Legend. Um, contact right, 101. Power left, 81. Power right, 93. The clutch is exceptional on him. You love to have a hitter whose clutch is his highest contact attribute. Uh, has good fielding, but obviously this is at third base, so you will have to kind of adjust. Um, so you're looking at 75 fielding, 88 arm strength, and insane reaction. So with that reaction and him having decent speed, I think he's S here in the outfield. Probably wouldn't play him in center field with the 71 speed, but in a corner spot, this card's crazy. I didn't know his reaction was that good, even with him losing five. Crazy good card. Acuna, this is crazy that, like, so many S-tier cards were kind of all grouped together in a row. Acuna's crazy. There's a reason he's in every top 50 players lineup right now, and a lot of those guys have super fractured him already. You can see great contact left, amazing contact right. Uh, good power against both sides. Usually he has a positive inside edge matchup too, to where he just demolishes the ball against one of these sides. Has dead red, has breaking ball, has unfazed. Those are the main three that you really want. Um, you can see his fielding. It's never going to get to silver, so that's a little unfortunate, uh, but it is still good enough. He will occasionally get that like flailing, kind of reach up animation. Um, so that does suck, but overall, not bad. Uh, 99 arm strength, arm accuracy, don't really care. Uh, and the reaction isn't great, but the speed is okay. The speed makes up for it. He gets to a lot of stuff still. Uh, and this bat's just too valuable. You can't discount a bat like that. Braun, uh, realistically, probably a D8. Let me just make sure. So, decent fielding, not very good reaction. Not very good speed, but I did not put Judge in DH, so I don't think I can put him in DH. I think they are very similar cards. Um, Ryan Braun is really good against lefties, though, I will say that. So if you did want to DH him and do like a DH platoon of like him and Adam Dunn or him and Chili Davis or him and Billy Williams, uh, I would not blame you at all. That's not a bad idea. Uh, it's just who would you rather be stuck with if they bring in a different pitcher? Um, but, you know, it's not a philosophy tier list. It is a uh, hitting tier list. So uh, I think he's good. Something's a little iffy about his swing. But again, in this meta, he's basically Cassianos, but not a positive defender. Uh, and I don't think he has all of his hitting quirks. So he does. He has dead red uh, and breaking ball. No one phased, which is a little eh. But basically, he's Cassianos, except significantly worse in the field. Um, so if you want to use Braun, he's definitely viable. Uh, I think he's the obvious pick over Fernando, but not going to be an S tier card. Uh, Otani is a DH. Yes, he's very fast, but oof, his, his defense is completely terrible. Uh, I looked at my Otani as a super fractured card. And what you also have to realize about him is that is 60 reaction before you put him in the field because he is registered as a primary dh 
Um, so if you put him in the field, he's going to lose even more. Uh, and he's not even insanely fast for an Otani, so he's not going to make up for that reaction. This is a pure DH. As a DH, he's kind of underrated. Uh, not a terrible card. Has dead red, has breaking ball, has unfazed. Almost every hitting quirk in the game, I believe. Um, and honestly, his hitting stats aren't terrible. Uh, I'll su show this card super fractured because it's not very hard to achieve since he's a pitcher and a hitter. Um, so you can see the contact numbers, a little bit low. Power numbers, very good. Vision, mid, um, and obviously he's pretty fast. So on All-Star, he's a great DH option. Hall of Fame and Legend, probably stay away from it. Stephen Kwan, I don't know how I feel about this card. I think he's B tier. If you are the archetype of player where you play a lot of All-Star and the moment you get on Hall of Fame, uh, you struggle a lot, you lose games, you can't barrel up, uh, the ball, you feel like the PCI is too small. Stephen Kwan might be the guy for you um, because he has crazy contact numbers, not great power numbers. He's going to get you a lot of blue pits, a lot of liners to drop in front of fielders. Um, so not a terrible card. I think his real value is, I believe he plays second, right? No, he doesn't. He's an outfielder. Um, so a very niche card i will say um but if that did describe you if you are somebody that really struggles on hall of fame and you feel like you need the biggest pci possible um then he's usable but on all-star this card's like f tier um but you know if you're in that niche subset of players where you like cannot hit on hall of fame as soon as it ticks over um then you know very good card there taylor Tremel great card uh the power numbers are a little iffy on them 70 82 uh, very similar contacts, uh, decent enough clutch. He's a relatively fast player with good fielding and good reaction. The problem is he's a left fielder. So basically this card is a significantly cheaper version of Jaron Duran. They are very similar cards. Uh, they have very similar swings. They both have very good swings. So really, uh, I believe Duran's like 70K, Tramel's like 30, 40K. Um, so for the bang for your buck, Tramel's probably the better player. Uh, Duran has one hitting quirk. Tremel has none. Um, so, but Duran's hitting quirk isn't great. I believe it's like, yeah, it's pinch hitter and home body, which home body kind of cancels out if you're the away team. Uh, so basically Duran has like one quirk. Uh, Tremel has none. It's really whose swing do you like more? How many stubs do you have in your bank account? Uh, but if you like those fast, speedy left fielders that can still swing the bat a little bit, two very good options here. Tim Sam in this card's a DH and not even a good DH in my opinion. Uh, I always think his swing is super mid. They did not give him the legend treatment of just gassing his quirks either. Uh, you can see, I believe, I believe he has inverse splits. So yeah, lower contact against lefties, but more power against uh, lefties. Higher contact against righties, but lower power against righties. Uh, mediocre clutch. He's insanely slow with not very good reaction. Uh, he is a pure DH, and I don't know why you would use him unless you're an Angels fan. Um, really, I think Quirks could have saved that card, but in general, in his current state, I don't see it. Uh, Tyler O'Neill, uh, without the Buxton team, I feel like he's like B tier probably. So you can see really bad contact numbers. You're not using this card on Hall of Fame. You're not using this card on Legend. Uh, but if you're an all-star demon, if you do run the Buxton team, uh, this card is exceptional on that team. Very fast, uh, pretty good defense. So not bad card. You put him on the Bucks and team, probably brings up to like an A tier, maybe even an S tier if you really enjoy a swing. Uh, but that is relative to all-star, obviously. Wyatt Langford, a good card. I used this card in BR recently. Um, you know, he does a lot of stuff well. This is Alex Gordon, if Alex Gordon was a better card. So you can see 97, 87, uh, 95, 90, 101. So great power, great clutch, uh, good fielding. He is pretty fast and has good reaction. So um, I would run that card over Alex Gordon all day. Uh, he's not a bad card. I don't know if he's worth his price point since he is a chase card, um, but not a bad card. He's very decent if you want to run him. There's a, definitely an argument to be made for him, but not personally my favorite. And then, who better? You know, save the best for last. Jordan Alvarez, this is the best DH in the game. Are you playing him in the field? Probably not. 
Um, he's not as bad as you might think he is in the field, but he's not very good either. Um, so not a bad card. This is the best hitter in the game, in my opinion. People love to stop by the stream and say, uh, what, what's the number one must get card? What's your favorite hitter this year? It's Jordan Alvarez. Doesn't even have breaking ball. That is very surprising to me because I have pulled multiple, many, many outside sliders with this card. You can just pull them down the line and they're home runs. Everything he touches turns to gold. This card is crazy to use. If you use him on the Nolan team, he gets even better. If you used him while he was supercharged, he was, you know, a god. Um, this card's crazy. 102 contact left, 97 against righties. That's before the Nolan boost. You add the Nolan boost. You're looking at, what, 117 against lefties? Something like that. Um, no, against righties. Uh, and then power-wise, you're getting, I think, 15 or 20 power with the Nolan team. Crazy card. Crazy card. The best hitter in the game, for sure. Has one of the better swings in the game. This card's insane. You can see, if you have 90,000 subs sitting in your account and you don't have your Don, I don't know what you're doing. Because uh, he's my number one recommendation. He's the best hitter in the game. And honestly, he has an argument for the best card in the game, in my opinion. He's crazy. Uh, if I had to just kind of rank this top tier of outfielders, I think legitimately this is probably the order I would go in. Um, it just kind of depends on what you want, right? If you like switch hitters a lot, then maybe this card like moves up to here for you. Um, but overall, out of using all these cards, I think this is kind of my preferred outfield rotation. Uh, any of these cards are very good. And honestly, I wouldn't mind adding this card just as a little shout for you all-star demons uh, out there that maybe run the Buxton team. Willie Castro, always a good card. Uh, you put some parallels on them. You put them on the Buxton team. Yeah, the reaction's really bad, uh, but he's a switch hitter with good power on the Buxton team. Um, without the Buxton team, yeah, he's probably in this tier of players. He still has a very good swing. Um, don't think he has any quirks, but definitely a great budget option uh if you run the buxton team crazy contact one of the only players that uh you can like run on hall of fame on the buxton team in my opinion that's super viable uh he gets like 20 power against both sides he becomes significantly faster uh and becomes a better fielder so as a outfield option not bad there either but yeah guys that is the outfield tier list this will not be posted in the description um, because show zone is broken for some reason. I guess I've done, done too many tier lists on this account. Um, so it's just not even saving my tier list anymore. So they will not be posted from now on unless show zone, uh, resolves that issue. But here is the full one. Feel free to scrub or pause if you want. Uh, I know the tiers are a little confusing. This is like my DH tier. Uh, C tier is these, uh, five cards. So not a lot. And then B tier, all these guys are super usable. A tier, um, you know, won't laugh at you for using these guys. And then S tier, I think these are the top dogs. These are the cream of the crop. Uh, I guess I could, while we're here, I'm sure somebody will say it because he just came out today. Uh, I'm not super familiar with the card, but I'll throw him in a tier real quick. A lot of people really enjoyed his swing last year. You can see he's a primary right fielder. Um... Below average contact against lefties, bang on against righties, terrible power left, decent power right, good enough clutch, uh, good fielding, good speed. So kind of, you know, in that Alex Gordon mold, does a lot of stuff well, nothing exceedingly well. So yeah, guys, that's going to be the tier list. If you did enjoy, again, I would urge you to like and subscribe. We will be coming out with more content throughout the entire year, keeping you guys up to date on what I think the best cards are. Till next time, guys. Peace.